Good morning guys. It's Tuesday the 7th of July 2020. Hope everybody's staying safe, being practical and keeping themselves out of harm's way. Right, in the shed as always, start the day on a high with a cup of coffee and, uh, and then we'll get some work done. So this morning on my uh, way up here to the allotment, I called into the local builders merchants. Uh, they couldn't do deliveries on the breeze blocks again so I decided I'd kill the car. <laughs> so what I've done is I've basically I got 12 breeze blocks which should be sufficient um, and I have another pallet there that I can utilize to give it a bit of extra height if I need it so what I'm hoping to do if the rain stays off today is to uh, drag that IBC down uh, near the old water bottles uh, rig up the pressure washer get the IBC uh, rinsed out and then start setting the breeze blocks and get the IBC up on top of there somehow on my own so uh, that's what my intentions. If the rain holds out, I'm also going to try and get the guttering on the back side of that shed and tap into that other downspout so we can get the extra water uh, off the roof into the other IBC and try and keep up these uh, rain battles topped up as much as we can. If you're new to this channel, guys, and you've just popped along, um, inquisitive, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and then the little bell icon on the right, and that would be really appreciated. I really do appreciate all my subscribers. Um, we try to cater for everybody on here uh, in, in all sorts of different forms. We do lots of different projects. Uh, I keep rare colour racing pigeons, racing pigeons and fantails. We have a bit of a growing area and a polytunnel. And you'll see the trials and tribulations that we go through in the year. There's many a time I've felt like giving up, but it's because of you guys that keeps me going. Right guys, enough babbling on. Um, as soon as I've had this cup of coffee, what I'm going to do is going to go and check on those youngsters. Uh, for those who have been following me along, you'll, real, uh, you'll know that I've actually taken some young birds, uh, young pigeons off the nests. We've put them into their own quarters now. This is uh, now the second full day in that loft. And we're just going to go and check in there now and see if any of them's managed to eat anything. Uh, and if indeed they are drinking. If not, we'll pick each one up again and we'll dip their head in the water and we'll keep doing this for f four to five days they will get a, they will eventually get the message if not already oftentimes by the second day or third day certainly nearly every one of them will have food in their crop uh, and water so guys uh, we'll give you a quick look at that first and then uh, i'm going to concentrate if the weather holds out trying to get the ibc set up um, and get the overflow pipe over out of the existing IBC into that one and then I'm going to try and get the uh, rain guttering up on the back side of that shed and tap into the other downspout so we can uh, at least make some use of my time off right guys enough bubbling on stay with me and follow me along Right guys, I'm here in the uh, young bird loft where we've uh, put these youngsters at. Um, they're certainly looking a lot livelier this morning. They're perked up and they're running about. But uh, one of the main things that I noticed the minute I walked through the door is, I don't know if you can see in the feeder here, but you'll see there's quite a lot of the feed has been eaten. Now, the amount of food that was in there, I don't think, has been consumed by the older, the three older, four, four older pigeons. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to catch the youngsters up, and we're going to check them, and we're going to feel the crop to see if they have food in there, and we're going to see if they've had water as well, by just gently, just very gently squeezing the crop. Um, I can tell whether there's food in there, and I can also tell whether they've had a drink or not. Now, if they have, then those birds won't get dipped in the water pot. 
if they haven't, any that hasn't, will get the head put in the water pot again. So um, we'll settle you down here somewhere and then uh, you can watch me go through the uh, checking of the pro uh, checking process of the young birds. Okay guys, I'm just going to settle you down. Uh, sorry about the uh, camera being all over the place at the moment, but we'll see what we can do. Um, try and get you a good position on here so we can uh, you can see what's going on. So here we have the little recess of red and just by very very gently squeezing on here I can tell that this little pigeon again has had something to eat but I'm not 100% certain it's had a drink today so just to be on the safe side we'll test it. Right so it's shaking its head and it's having none of it, which means it has had a drink. By now, that would be you would see it start to glug away and really, really draw up water um, if it was thirsty. So that one's fine. Now here we have the uh, biggest and oldest of the birds, this is the almond and feeling its crop does feel like, it's a bit nervous this one, it does feel like it's got something in there, not a lot but a little bit. So just in case again we're going to dip the beak in water and see if it draws any water. And it's not, so it must have got some. If, as I say, if they're thirsty, what they'll do is they will, you will see the pigeon staying in there quite a while, drawing of water. Uh, and they're not doing that, so it does look like that they are actually getting the water on the corn. This is the other little almond, um, it was all over the place this one. Uh, interestingly as well, the other almond I've just showed you is already perching up and it's flying up onto the perches, so it can fly already. Now this one here definitely has food and water. After all that of catching it, I'm not even going to bother putting its head in the water, I'm confident that's eating and drinking. This is the uh, Opal Stroke Qualmond Pied. Now this feels empty, so we're going to see if he'll have a drink. Still not drinking, but they will. And they aren't sitting hunched up in a corner with their eyes closed which is usually a good indication they aren't getting any uh, liquid. Now, as I say, this is probably overkill, but it's to show people who are thinking about getting pigeons, raising pigeons, fancy pigeons, fantails, just the process that we do um, to make it so that none of the birds suffer in any way, shape or form. Um, and this, Hopefully will be a benefit to someone. I'm just going to go and get another one guys. So this is the nest mate, this is the little qualmond. Um, that's the uh, 
nest mate to that one I've just had and it's actually getting some more black dots on the head as well now as well around the face uh, this one does feel like it's got a little drop of water in but we'll just check it anyways yeah, she's not drinking but repetition for two or three days of bringing them to the bowl and putting the head in there they will get the message and they will all drink eventually another couple of days and every one of these birds won't need chicken um, I'll be able to see visually they'll have big bulging crops so there's no point in me uh, going through every single individual uh, that's just to show you what we actually do um, as you'll see they've had a little bit of a, a play in here and they've pulled all the uh, they've pulled out the liners from the nests um, but yeah they're all pretty happy perked up very very lively and uh, as you can see if I move my hand now they're very 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 quick to move so they're all perked up none of them sitting hunched up feeling sorry for themselves so they're still in good health and that's all I'm bothered about guys I'll catch you later right guys quick update in the garden as you can see the potatoes are absolutely humongous now so growing well really hoping for a good crop out of these sap or mirrors these are the main crop and they've still got some time to go yet about another eight weeks or something um, but they're actually protruding now over onto the path and it's getting a bit difficult to get down that side of the bed so I'm having to come through the middle here so you remember in an earlier video I'd said I'm starting to get something attacking the plants now and I did get some slug pellets and one thing and another but I never got round to getting them down and as you can see some of these are getting absolutely decimated now completely decimated and they, these are some of the better ones uh, thankfully they haven't touched these three cabbages yet and we've got lots of little holes in the uh, turnip leaves but that's not a problem because we don't eat the leaves um, you can probably see these little snow globe turnips I'm trying to get more capture one on here now uh, but they are starting to fill out now guys little snow globe turnips are starting to come through and then we've got the beetroot all well perked up now guys and starting to get established moving on to the cauliflowers that I got from my father-in-law in here the nine of them Again, that one is still struggling. This one here is getting attacked right, left and centre, but you can just start now, see the cauliflower start to form on there. Um, and the other ones are not too bad. That's a cabbage I planted, I don't know how long ago, but it's never ever grew any bigger, pointless. And then the radish all coming along in leaps and bounds. This is the second uh, cropping of, of radish. Um, starting to reach maturity, some of them now. Then we do have one or two little onions that we planted. As you remember, the birds pulled most of these out. About half a dozen have survived. And then the carrots are all coming along in leaps and bounds now in here. And there's uh, three rows of those. Again... Um, the runner beans are just looking anemic, they haven't done anything pretty much pointless and a wasted effort with those this year. Again, I think I put them out too soon, the frost got them. And then we've got these turnips here, some doing better than others, some not hardly growing at all. And then other ones actually, as you can see, we've got small, beet, uh, small turnip. Courgette having a go now. Uh, it's took a long time again, put that out too soon, we learn by our mistakes. The peas are really getting started now and going, even the new ones that I uh, planted in alongside of the uh, patch where we had some bulb patches, but it's obvious which ones are which. Now in this bed here where we took out our early potatoes, this is looking really really good guys. So these are the uh, three little cauliflowers that I said had a hard start in life. And as you can see, two of them are really going. These are the normal cauliflowers, not like the ones over there, which uh, they grow in a spiral. 
uh, the other type. These are the normal cauliflower. Um, even the little one that was on death's door has recovered. And there is one down here as well, which is that got pulled out by the birds and left for dead. Put that in, and it's starting to get established again, guys. Then in here we have uh, some more cauliflowers. These are the ones I got from uh, Morrison's. I think it was Morrison's or Aldi. Uh, there was there was five cauliflowers, and then there was five purple broccoli. Uh, five down each side of the tree. We got those in. They're all looking very well. And you get some slug pellets in here. Uh, just to make sure these don't get attacked and these here are the kale it's a chinese kale that i got off my father-in-law they were putting about a fortnight before these and as you can see these are absolutely really really uh, going for it now guys right so that's just a quick update over here guys the other the, uh, three sapor mirrors that was surplus we just threw in there also going for guns uh, going great guns and then I have pulled quite a number of onions out of here now and as you can see they're starting to fall over so I'm just going to leave them to bulb up and in the next week or so we'll be pulling most of those if not them all um, we'll probably eat them as fast we won't get a chance to store them we'll eat them as fast as they come up uh, we eat a lot of onions and uh, yeah as I say look at the height of these potatoes now guys they're, they're huge absolutely huge but I really am hoping to get a good crop out of this bed if it's half as good as the uh, early potatoes that come out of there wow we're in for a bumper crop oh i just wanted to show you this one that i haven't showed you yet so uh, the red lettuce still going strong plenty of those still um what were these little gem little gem lettuces all ready for picking now but look at these here guys these are these are two brussels sprouts look at the state of these there's nothing left of them nothing left of them they're being absolutely destroyed and then likewise with my good cabbages they've been decimated absolutely decimated guys this is what happens when you try to do too many things at once and you've got too many irons in the fire as they say uh, but yeah, they're absolutely obliterated, all of these. That's the only one that's survived. I'm seriously thinking about pulling anything out that's good and putting them into this bed, slug pellets down and then recovering in that bed there. Strip this bed out and reuse this one uh, once I've salvaged the good plants to put into there. Anyway, so that's another job for another time, guys. Catch you later. Bye. So just for those that didn't see the earlier videos as well, um, as I said, I've actually set up some security cameras here now on the garage. They're on this back side, away from the uh, little path that runs up here, the side of the allotment. And we've got this one here that's looking down, obviously looking down the garden. And then I've got this one here, which basically looks right through the entire allotment. All the way up there um, and they're functioning really well guys i can just tap into them on the mobile have a look at what's going on anytime i want hit the record on the mobile and capture anything that's going on all right guys catch you later bye actually just looking through the chicken pen here guys and as you can see this stayed pretty bad most of the year but you can see it's really greened up now uh, and even with 30 ends they're not quite keeping it a bit and you can see some of the really big tufts. So the next time we pull the lawnmower out to do that section, we'll drive through these gates here and we'll drive into here and we'll give this a cut. So uh, yet another job to do when we get the other one sorted. So you later, guys. Right, guys, it started pouring down again now. So what I've done is I've actually managed to get the guttering along the back of this roof this back side of this shed which is 10 foot by 5 foot it's not a pretty sight but it'll do and it will catch the water once the end here and I've had to cobble it with a piece of second hand down spot because they didn't have any in B&Q when I went which goes into a T connector here and joins up with this one now it's not perfect but there is a fall on it and you can see it is actually falling down and we should just catch that bit of extra water by setting that up guys 
the back side of the shed was just going to waste anyway, so I might as well put on the gutter in and try and catch the extra water with this little tea piece in here that we put. And hopefully that's going to help to fill this uh, IBC much quicker each time it rains now, guys. So it's at least one job jobbed. Right guys, like I said, it's uh, absolutely pouring down outside there now, so I've just popped back in the shed to, to grab yet another cup of coffee. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get anything else done up here today. Uh, I'm just waiting to see if the weather does ease off a little bit. I need to at least try and get the breeze blocks out of the back of the car because of the weight uh, in that boot and the suspension on the car. I don't want to damage that. So even if nothing else, I'm going to have to dodge the raindrops and uh, get the bricks, uh, get those breeze blocks out of the boot and at least into the pen if I get nothing else done today, guys. So I'm not sure whether uh, we are going to get anything else done or not, but at least I've got one job done. Uh, I thought I would do the guttering first as it seemed to be the quicker job and it turned out that that was the case. Um, all the grasses went round the back of there again now uh, as a result of the rain. And it's not very pleasant trying to work outside in the rain, so um, I've had my fair share of that. So I'm going to give it uh, 10 or 15 minutes, guys, and we'll wait and see if it fares up. Uh, and if it does, we'll uh, have a go at that and give you a, a look at it later. And if not, I'll come back with the final and uh, we'll close it off for the day. Right, guys, it's absolutely chucking it down with rain. Uh, what I have done is I've managed to get the uh, breeze blocks out of the boot of the car. I forgot just how heavy these things are. Even four of those was a struggle pulling them around in the truck even because we're coming up bank. Uh, basically what I've done, I've got a rough guide there with the pallet laid out and just partially set up. It's too wet to do anymore guys. I will frame them we put around this IBC in an earlier video. It just couldn't hold the weight of this. It just bust and uh, basically that's it down there guys. So at least we'll salvage the wood off it again. Right, I'm not hanging around out here anymore. As long as I've got the car unloaded. Four of them nearly killed me. <laughs> so imagine how the car was feeling with 12 of these in the back. Oh, I, I really have forgot just what sort of weight's in these things, guys. See you later. Just a quick update for you guys. Just paid a little visit in here. And she's braver than I thought she was. And as you can see, the ice end has finally got two babies. So I'm super excited about these guys. Super excited. I'm not going to disturb you too much. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of a quick update with that. They have hatched. So I was right about the uh, eggshells yesterday uh, being off the ice end. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see these or not, but these two youngsters, I'm going to take them off the nest tomorrow. And you might be able to make out now, this one here has got pink, pinky black bars as opposed to the other one which has got black bars. You can possibly just see the pink in, in these bars. And uh, that's an opal bar pied guys. And that's a blue pied. They are ready for coming off tomorrow, definitely. And I'm pretty sure these two can come off tomorrow as well, guys. So this is an almond pied and a khaki brown. And two more eggs in there. So just thought I'd give you that little update in here, guys. At long last, we finally have the two, uh, two young ones off the ice end. Now, she's the only bird I have in this colour. And they're really, really difficult to get hold of uh, as good uh, as good a colour as this. And uh, I, I used to have a, a cock exactly the same as this one. Unfortunately, the cock died before I got any chance to uh, get any anything out of them. Um, I only had I, I purchased them and I only had them um, about a fortnight, and the uh, the cock died on me. Thankfully, the hen survived. And then when she struggled earlier in the season to lay eggs, I was beginning to think I'd been sold some more duffers. However, I'm super excited. Now, the youngsters won't come out that colour. 
but they won't come out as dark as the male either. So they'll be somewhere mid-range, but they will have the black bars, but they'll be fainter as well because the birds will be split for barless. And I'm gonna try and get, produce this color in the barless gene. So follow me along on that one as well, guys. We'll see how we do. It could be a lengthy process over a year or two, but um, we'll see how it goes, guys. Right, quick update, we'll catch you later, guys. Oh, by the way, guys, I meant to say, the uh, pair of staff van reach, the chick didn't make it. Two days it had been trying to chip out the uh, shell, and unfortunately it didn't make it, guys. So, we'll leave it and see if we get anything on the third round. Shouldn't, they've never let me down, this pair. Normally they just lay and everything's fine. Um... This year is the first time I've had any problem with this pair. As I say, they are getting on a little bit now, the 2012 birds. So they're about eight or nine years old now. Uh, eight years old, I think they are. Um, so the first eggs were completely clear, which means the male hadn't made it correctly. The second nest were full, so the male's still fertile. But for whatever reason, guys, one egg got broke and the other one didn't make it, chipping out. Right guys, as always, we're on the final roundup. I'm just having another cup of coffee. I'm absolutely soaked through now. Um, right, so I just thought I'd give you a, a, a bit of an update for those that are uh, interested in the pigeon videos, especially um, the ISN. Uh, super excited. She's now finally got two youngsters. I can't wait to see what they turn out like, guys. Um, the red, the red pied stuff van reed hen and the blue pied cock. The blue pied cocks won races in the past, and the hen is uh, the half sister to a second combine winner last year. Um, and they have bred some good pigeons, and I do have plenty of sons and daughters off that pair, which I've retained for stock. Um, but and normally they are one of the better pairs of breeders. Uh, there isn't a year yet that I've paired them up and had a problem with them. This is the first year ever. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's something to do with the age of them now, being eight years old. Um, perhaps, perhaps not. Hopefully not. Anyways, guys, um, I was just a quick update. I wonder, uh, for those that were interested, just let you see that we we finally at least got uh, a pair of youngsters out of the ice. And that was one of the main pairs that I really wanted youngsters out of. And the full stencil was the secondary pair and uh, the reduced birds. Now we've got youngsters out of both uh, the reduced cock and the reduced hen. Um, and we've got now youngsters out of the ice bar. Um, but we, as yet, unless something turns up in the mystery eggs, don't have anything out of the full stencils. Um, after they read that one chick, I may just try putting the daughter from last year, which is an Andalusian, back to the full stencil cock, just to see if I can get a pair of late breads out of them. And by some miracle, maybe even get some white bar blacks or Andalusians out of them. Now, it's a very long process and a long, a lengthy project. It's the full stencil project, guys, but I'm going to enjoy myself along the way. Um, right, guys. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, a bit of a variety today, uh, quick look in the grown area, a look in the polytunnel, um, a look at the pigeons, um, I made a start on the IBC, I got the gutron on the back of the uh, shed um, and tapped into that downspout and it's still pouring down now, I've got the bricks unloaded out of the car, so that'll save my car from uh, breaking the suspension. Right, um, that really is it for today guys. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Please do leave me some comments in the sections if you are. Give me a thumbs up at the very least, if you don't mind. If you are new to this channel and you've just came along and visit and you're inquisitive, please do hit the subscribe button, then the little bell icon, and that will alert you every time I put up a new video. And hopefully you can follow me along, guys. And hopefully someone somewhere will learn something from my successes and failures. As always guys, stay safe, be practical and keep yourself out of harm's way. And we're going to see you in the next video. See you later guys.